Right, Awesomeness Junkies, welcome to Hustle is for Life Motivation. I am your host, Talal, and this is going to be a phenomenal episode. I have somebody very special with me, but before we dig deep there, let me just talk to you about something. This channel is called Hustle is for Life because it's got a very important message there. And the message is this. For each area of your life, if you want to achieve holistic success, if you constantly want to make sure that you're achieving extraordinary results, you're creating an extraordinary life for yourself, you need to hustle. What I mean by that is you need to raise the bar in each and every single area of your life and then you need to make you need to grow yourself you need to become the best version of yourself so you can go and take action and make sure that you are able to create extraordinary results extraordinary results don't happen by themselves you have to create them and in order to create them you first have to become an extraordinary person and hence when i bring on guests my goal is to bring on people from all walks of life who have done amazing things who have created extraordinary results for themselves, who have a great story to share that you can relate to, and finally, they're doing amazing things to help others. And that's the criteria I look for when I try and bring on amazing guests onto our show. And today, I have somebody very special, somebody who has achieved a lot, somebody who really believes in helping others. She has achieved a lot of things. She's working on a lot of things. We had a quick catch up and she is just phenomenal. Okay. So let me go into the bio, the intro, so I can do her the, the, uh, the true justice of what she deserves uh, in terms of an intro. So Kay Sanders is our guest today and she is known as the creator of possibilities. She's also an intuitive business coach. She's a certified and I'm totally going to butcher this, uh, Akashic Record Consultant. Okay, I think I got it, right? I, yeah. I, yeah, I think I got it. Uh, she's, also, yeah. <laughs> she's also a best-selling author, and she actually mainly works with coaches. She likes help, you know, helping coaches to really grow into the best version of themselves so they can go and help their clients. She helps conscious entrepreneurs to find that missing piece to create momentum in their business and reignite their manifesting mojo so they can make a difference in the world. That's that's what her goal in life is to help others make a difference. And that's how she's making a difference. And she also wants to create more freedom in their life and tap into the magic and power of manifesting their heart's desire. So Without much further ado, let's put our hands together and welcome Kay Sanders. Kay, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. Awesome. Well, I'm so glad you took the time to be here with us. Um, we connected on LinkedIn, actually, and uh, I came across your profile. I was really impressed by all the stuff that you've been doing. And, you know, you're, you've got so much more lined up for 2018. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But I just immediately reached out and I wanted to bring you on the show because I thought you had an amazing story to tell. You've achieved so much. You've created extraordinary results and you're doing a lot to help others. I mean, it just basically fits everything, all the criteria I look for in a guest. So, yes, I'm really thankful and really grateful that you're here with us. I think this is going to be an awesome conversation. Yeah, most definitely. I think we're going to make it an awesome conversation, don't we? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. So, Kay, let's, uh, let's, let's start from, from the beginning. Take us back in time. Take us back to when you got started, when you started becoming an entrepreneur, when you started your journey down this path. And all the all the kind of you know realizations and the discoveries uh, and the epiphanies that you had along the way. Okay, I mean it's a very very long story. I mean I'm 37 <laughs> years old, you know, but I'm not gonna try to cut it short. But basically, where did it all begin? I mean I've been an entrepreneur all my life. I remember when I was a little kid, I was like putting things together, creating little things, selling them for a few cents and here and there in school. So I was like really like my entire life, I always had an entrepreneur life, uh, the entrepreneur spirit, I always wanted to do more. Then I'm from Germany, so before I came to the States, uh, I was married and I thought, hey, what can I do to work from home? Start out as a nail technician, did pretty well, but then when I came to the States, nothing that I did here, did, uh, did, uh, did back in Germany actually mattered here it didn't count so mm. i basically started from scratch uh, my ex-husband at that time i mean my my ex-husband now 
he left us to, left us two months after we got you. So I was like, okay, what am I going to do now? Wow. I want to create life for my son didn't really know what i was doing mm -hmm. none of the stuff that i did in germany was accepted here so i dabbled into network marketing you know i had this one person who made it seem so great on network marketing i'm like yay i had no clue what i was doing i was horrible in sales i had no friends and family here so you know in network marketing that's what they tell you go after your friends and family i'm like well, i don't have no one here so of course i failed numerous times like lots of lots of times i tried to think network marketing like six seven times wow. it wasn't good and then <laughs> and then in 2012 is when i stumbled over the coaching industry because i was working in a ptsd treatment facility I learned a lot about my own inner gremlins i used to have ptsd depression anxiety you name it i had it, all that mindset stuff but I didn't want to be labeled, you know, that I'm screwed for life, right? Mm. So I did a lot of research. I stumbled over the whole coaching, the holistic side. And I'm like, you know what? This is amazing. This is something I can do where I can help others. I mean, at that point, I already had learned a lot about, you know, overcoming my own fears and social anxiety and all that stuff. Yeah. So that's when I was like, you know what? I want to make this my, my business. Mm. I mean, I, I came across it. I'm like, this is just amazing. But it took me a very long time because, yes, I learned about the holistic side of coaching, but I didn't learn how to coach or how to build a business. Right. And it was not until 2015 I got certified as a coach, actually worked with my very first coach. and But that's actually when all the, the, the struggle started because that's when I had to actually go out there and build my business, mm. get clients. Yeah. And my mindset was not happy with that. So I struggled for a very, very, very long time. And it was really, I, I felt like I was hitting my, my head against the wall and I kept trying and trying and trying, doing all the right things. I mean, at that time in 2015, that's also when I rebranded as a business coach because I love the systems, the strategies. I'm German, so I like processes. <laughs> but the one thing that w I was missing was the mindset piece. And that's mm. what was really holding me back. So Early on, I mean, I was doing all the right things. I was marketing myself. I was going out there, being interviewed. And I remember my very first interview, but we don't want to talk about that because it was that horrible. <laughs> but anyways, it was just like, I mean, I was doing all the right things to market myself, to market my business, but nothing was getting me the results that I want. I had a couple, couple of clients here and there, but that's about it. It was really like pulling teeth. And it was not until my coach told me something. You mentioned something earlier too about, you know, the becoming part. Yeah. And he told me that, it doesn't matter what you do in your business. The one thing that matters is who you need to become in mm. order to become successful. Yeah. And at first, I had no idea what he was talking about. I thought he had lost his mind. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm doing all the things that I need to do. But then he really sunk in and I realized, you know what? I have been blocking myself. I mean, I have been sabotaging my, my efforts because internally I was not ready. I had one coach told me uh, once, like at the very, very early on, that how can you coach business if you're not even successful yet? Yeah. And you know, that right there, even though, I mean, I was at the beginning and you gotta start somewhere, right? And I was good when it comes to creating systems, creating strategies and all these things. But just by her saying that every time when I talk to a potential client in the back of my mind, I'm like, I'm not good enough. I can't do this. You know, mm. why would they pay me? So I block everything. So when my coach told me about the whole becoming part, that's when I really took a deep dive into personal development. I learned that I'm an empath and all that spiritual side happened. And then, you know, things just started to fall in place because I worked on becoming who I needed to become mm. in order to allow clients to come to me, in order to allow money to come into my life and actually make money with my business. So it was really, I was focusing a lot on the becoming part and still the doing part, but a lot more on the becoming part. Yeah, yeah. So that's basically my story in short. Awesome. That powerful story. Very powerful story. Um, I love it. And thank you for sharing so deeply. You know, uh, you, you, you were very open, you were very transparent, and, and you shared deeply. So yeah, that's, uh, that's awesome. For the audience, I want you to take a step back. I want you to put yourself in Kay's shoes. You've just moved to a different country. And your partner leaves you. You're left there with a son. Everything that you've done so far doesn't count. And you are expected to get results. And what kind of mindset would you be in at that time? And what kind of mindset would it take you to go ahead and achieve extraordinary results? 
I mean, Kay talked about the fact that she struggled with the mindset part of things for a long time. But in the meantime, she didn't just sit still. Which part of this story resonates with you the most? Where does it actually go and hit deep with you? Because I think, that, you know, Kay just kind of talked over it very casually because obviously that's her story and, and she's in a great place now so she can look back at it and, and talk, talk about it in that manner. But really, to me, it hit me really deeply because there's a lot there that definitely resonates with me and I'm sure it will definitely resonate with you. What story are you telling yourself in your mind that's holding you back? And the most important thing that Kay uh, Kay shared with us with what her coach told her is the becoming part, something that I absolutely believe in, that if you want to create an extraordinary life, you want to achieve extraordinary results, you have to become the extraordinary person first in order to go ahead and do those things. So, Kay, I absolutely love it. You talk there about your mindset and then the change in the mindset and how that happened. Let's go down that rabbit hole. Can you talk to us about how you managed to get over all that negativity. And obviously you said you struggled with it, but obviously you weren't sitting still. You were still working on it. You talked about you discovered the spiritual aspect uh, of, of your mindset, etc., and your personality. And you learned about yourself and essentially how you operate. And you put those things into action. So can you maybe share share that part of the story with us on how you actually you know, change that negative mindset to a positive mindset because I think that that's really powerful and, and will add a lot of value to people. I mean, I did a lot of things. I mean, I was really bombarding myself with just about anything. I mean, I was that desperate. I was like, I want to make this work. So, I mean, one was my my coach. I mean, he took me through the ringer like many times where he left me like, you know, like, oh my God, I'm never going to make this. Mm. But it was also a lot of reading. I mean, I read uh, like Wayne Dyer's books were really, really, really had a huge impact on me, stretched me badly because you know thinking about these things and what's all possible and you know for for a normal person that's not really open to that i mean i know for myself it took me a very long time to be ready to read his books because someone had told me about his books i think back in 2015 and i was at that point simply not ready for it and then last year i finally read his books and it was just like wow mind-blowing But, you know, a lot of the things is, you know, really digging deep and finding out what are your inner gremlins. And, you know, one of the one of the tools that I used a lot was EFT. It's the emotional freedom technique or tapping that has helped me release a lot of my self-doubt, limiting beliefs. And I mean, I still struggle with certain ones. You know, I mean, I don't think we ever I mean, mindset work is messy. Mindset work is something that you have to do constantly every single day for the rest of your life, because there's always going to be something that's going to trigger you. And if you do something something and it doesn't work out that well you're like oh my god I'm such a loser I can't do this this is not working and that's when you really have to you know catch yourself so I can't really say there's just one thing that I did I mean I do a daily routine I started over like about a year and a half ago a daily routine where I start with gratitude I do my angel card readings I do my six goals that I, goals uh I goal achieving activities I want to accomplish that day. I do write down like the I am statements. Mm. So I do a lot of things to keep myself, you know, in a higher vibration, positive. I've done uh, affirmations, mind movies. I have my little mind map right here. My, my, my vision board, I have it printed like a digital one. I have it right here. I have affirmations all over my office. So I do things to really keep myself reminded mind on you know staying positive and not letting my ego mind really run the show because all these fears the, the, the self-doubt that's your ego mind that's the lies you've been telling yourself that you can't do something mm. it's the illusion that you live by because I believe that anything is possible and you know early when you kind of gave the quick rundown about my story I'm like pain that was really horrible actually <laughs> you know and it's like you have to continuously moving forward and you know just reminding yourself of you know who you are deep within and like my ex I mean he put me through hell and I used to struggle from social anxiety every every time I stepped outside I driving I had a full-blown anxiety attack not knowing I did that but you know it really took a lot of letting go of that fear that self-doubt like he had basically programmed into my mind that I'm not I'm not worthy I'm not good enough Mm. and all these things I mean you name it I mean that's what he basically called me and it really took me a very long time to realize like you know what I am an amazing being I am an amazing person I am 
well, I'm not going to say that word, but the S-H-I-T kind of word. You know, I'm not trying to have a big hit here. But, you know, it, it took me, it, I'm not really, I'm, I'm saying this not just because I'm, you know, I have a big hit or anything, but it's just really to realize that who I am as a person. And, you know, just realizing that I really am valuable, that I really am good enough to do something, that's really what helped me, you know, move forward. And I had days where I almost gave up. But it was really my desire to make a difference in my son's life, my own life, having that freedom and just being able to impact someone else's life. That's what kept kept me going. And that's what you really need to have is you need to have a strong why in order to keep moving forward. If you don't have a strong enough why, you are going to let your, your inner gremlins run the show and you're not going to be able to really move past that. And for me, I mean, I've been doing this for, I started in the coaching in 2012 and I had many, many, many failures. Mm. And like I said, I was at a point uh, many times where I almost gave up. But you know, if you stick through it, then a lot of the possibilities come up. And I mean, there are so many possibilities out there for you. But oftentimes we don't see those possibilities or we're just not open to that and because we just think, oh, this is all there is. I can't do more. I'm not good enough to have more. But you do. You are. I mean, you can do just about anything if you allow yourself. If you allow yourself to see the possibilities and then be open to receiving those possibilities. That's like really the key in, you know, making anything work and then, you know, continuously moving forward and not let your ego mind really run the show. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I, I totally agree with what you're saying there. There's a really powerful message in everything that you said there. The the fact, one of the things I want to, you know, highlight is the fact you said that you will never be able to get over it. You constantly have to work at it, right? And I think that's the thing that most people forget, that it's not just something for this moment or for this day or for this week. It's something you constantly have to work on because each day, each week, each month is going to be different and it will require a different version of you on each of those days, each of those weeks and each of those months. So you constantly have to work on it and not give up. And that, that was another really important message you talked about. You, regardless of what's going on, if you just stop, you, you will just, like, nothing's going to happen. If you just stop, nothing's going to happen. So the only way it happens is if you just keep going right yes okay. there will be failures there will be bad days but you just keep going and that's where extraordinary results lie because you know people most people just are not willing to go that far they're not willing to endure that pain and if you are somebody who is willing to endure the pain you will get to the other side and there will be light and you will get extraordinary results exactly yeah, yeah I'm, I'm totally on the right uh, on the same page with you and the thing is when it comes to the constant growth i mean if you're looking at all these successful entrepreneurs mm. you know every time they want to you know up the bar take their business to the next level they're going to have mindset challenges you know that's going to be like am i really good enough can i really do this do i really want that because when you become successful your life is going to change. Yeah. People are going to have expectations for you. They're going to look at what you're doing. They're just waiting for you to fail. So that fear of success is really real. I mean, some people might say, why would I be afraid of success? But if you think about it, if you would become highly successful from today to tomorrow, make like, you know, millions of dollars, that would be scary because then you're like, what What if I lose everything? Mm -hmm. And then you, you get to do different things. And, you know, it's so there's all that mindset. And your ego is going to be on a, on a hissy fit. It's going to freak out just real, thinking about, oh, my God, you know, what if I am becoming successful? I'm going to be out there. I'm going to be visible. People are going to see me. And, oh, my God. So that's very, very scary. So even if you make, let's say, your six, seven-figure income and you want to take the next step, there are going to be mindset challenges that are going to come up. So that's why it is a, cons cons a constant work you have to do to really work on your mindset. But the good thing is the most challenging part is, I think, the beginning until you really get into the habit of having your daily routines and those type of things. But once you're in that habit, it's going to be so much easier to work on your mindset, to keep you know moving forward. Mm. It's just a hard part is really getting started. So I, I yeah. just kind of want to point that out, that even though it's like a lifelong journey, it gets easier because once you're in the habit, you know, you just know what you need to do. If you start having that, you know, your ego is going on a hissy fit, you know what to do to basically shut it up. So you will not go down that the dark side. But, you know, the beginning part is the most difficult one because for one, 
you got to figure out what am I talking about? I mean, what am I thinking all day long? What is that, you know, mindset chatter that's really holding me back? Because that's like in the subconscious mind. You don't even really realize all the bad things that you say to yourself all day long in your mind. Yeah. And being conscious about that, that is the most difficult part. And also really realizing where do your challenges really come from? Because when you have certain challenges or certain fears, they usually come from something that you learned early on as a child. For yeah. example, money challenges. I mean, so many people that have money challenges. And that was one of my biggest challenges, too. And that's from something that came from early on. So let's say you grew up in a family and... You were always, you know, kind of, you know, short on money and your parents always said, we can't afford that. You know, that's so expensive and, you know, rich people, they're evil and, and those type of things. So as a child, you don't know better. So you grow up learning, making money is hard. You have to work really hard and don't ever make too much money because then you turn evil. So guess what's going to show up when you try to build your business? All that, all yeah. that programming that you grew up with is going to show up today in your business so in order to take your business to the next level and make more money get more clients you got to deal with that yeah. and that's really the hard part is and then also being open to really being honest with yourself to really realize you know what you know i made that choice because of this and that but then you can you always have a choice to go the different route to make a different choice yeah. so i kind of just want you to throw that into yeah absolutely absolutely and you know for people who are here with us right now you're getting coaching, live coaching from the person who coaches other coaches, right? So everything that's coming out, you know, from, from what Kay is saying is literally just pure gold. And this is what Kay actually talks to her clients about who are actually, co you know, coaches who are coaching other people. And Kay is giving them the best of what she knows. And that's what she's sharing with us right now. So I just want you to understand the value of what's, what, you know, Kay is saying right now. And there are a few things which you again talked about really, really powerful. One was constantly reading and upgrading, upgrading the software that runs your mind, that actually runs you, who you are, right? Because for a lot of people, they like, I hate reading. I don't want to look into reading. You know, it's boring, etc. But a book is somebody's life's work. You're condensing time. You're collapsing time. If you read a book or if you read a few books, you're literally living several lifetimes worth of life right in your life and you know picking out the best of what they know and applying them to your life would really help you accelerate and i absolutely believe in what Kay is saying and literally before we jumped on onto this call guess what i was doing i was reading yeah i was reading this is my book for february okay so i got a few pages left i gotta finish it off this is my book in february um i book i at least try to read one book every month right my book for march just arrived today so i'm going to be getting on to that quite soon as soon as i finish this one but i try to read at least one book um uh, uh, a month and i'm actually part of a book club to hold me accountable to that so I think that was that was really awesome. You know, reading really is great and it really helps you. And you also talked about, you know, having habits and practices and routines and you shared your routines and your habits and your practices. And what was really powerful was the fact that you said that, you know what, you need to get into the routine of those habits. Mm -hmm. And that's where you, things will start to become easy. So not just doing one thing, okay, one day and then expecting a different outcome. No, you have to change how you think, how you do things, how you view things. And then you will see different results. And that takes time. You know, habit stacking, building up those stacks of habits and having those routines in place to catch yourself, introspection, constantly challenge yourself. Like, what am I thinking? What am I feeling right now? Why am I feeling like this? Why am I thinking like this? Okay, etc. Uh, just... Whatever, whatever you shared there, Kay, was just phenomenal. And I just wanted to highlight those things because they really hit base with me. And I absolutely believe in all those things. I just wanted to highlight those super powerful stuff. Thank you. No problem. And you know, one thing, you know, also when it comes to the habit, like, you know, when I started meditating as well. And before I med started meditating, I'm like, I hate meditating. <laughs> I can't just sit there, you know, for like five, ten minutes not thinking, oh, my God, this is not possible. Yeah. And I always thought like you know my work is more important i need, i don't have time for that mm. but you know then one day i was like when i started my because my morning routine it's like written written uh things that i do and then i make sure that i meditate every single morning so i tried it 
Mm. And yes, it was painful at first. I'm like, oh my God, am I done yet? Am I done yet? I'm, I was like one of that little kid, like, am I done yet? Am I done yet? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you get used to it. And now it's like, if I don't meditate each morning, mm. my day is not right. And even when you, like, I'm very sensitive to the energy. And like right now, the energy is just crazy. I need that me time because it sets me up on a whole, like a whole different level. So when I start a day without my meditation, I'm cranky. I am just totally feeling very, very disconnected. And I just, I'm not focused enough because then my mind is like all, all over the place. So when you, you just need to start, that's the thing. And then be gift yourself that. I mean, that, I think that's what I want to hi uh, highlight here is gift yourself that time mm. because it is not taken away from your business or from whatever else because it's going to make you much better in your business. So I like to tell my clients, gift yourself that time because that is time for you. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, with the reading, for example, I mean, you can always do audible so you don't have to actually read it. Like, you know, there are so many different opportunities, but, you know, really allow yourself to take that time to yourself. That's your you time. And then make that a habit. And, you know, after like the first 30 days, that's when it becomes a habit. And then you, when you look back, let's say you're doing this for like three months at a time, you're going to look back. You don't want to go back to not doing that. And what I know for myself, I would mm. not want to go back to where I was, I think like a year and a half ago. That's when I started my daily routine. I would not want to go back there because I didn't like myself then. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. I really didn't. And it's just, it made me a much happier person. It sets up the day in a much higher tone. And it's just, you just got to stick with it and give yourself that time. That's what, what I would like to add is like, allow yourself to take that time, lock yourself in your room or whatever, and just give it a try. Gift yourself that time. I, I love that. I love that phrase. Gift yourself that time. Mm -hmm. I love it. I absolutely love it. And, and I think it's really powerful because it's true, Right. If you view it as a burden, you will never do it. If you view it mm -hmm. as a gift, this is a gift to myself. I'm giving myself a gift. Then obviously you'll be more motivated. You'll be more driven to go ahead and do those things. And those habits, those routines are actually really important. You mentioned meditation. I love meditation, right? I do several different types of meditation throughout the whole day. And I actually, you know, do meditation halfway through the day to kind of get me back to ground zero before I actually go ahead and tackle the second part of my day. And now I've actually been working on doing, you know, kind of like micro meditations, which are like between the transitions. So before I enter home, after I finish work, now it's going to be like home time, right? So I need to kind of bring myself back to the ground and say, okay, fine, I'm going to release all the tension I'm carrying and I'm going to set the intention of that I'm going to enter the house and how I'm going to be and what I'm going to encounter and how I'm going to actually deal with things. Same with, for example, if I'm going to go and see my friends before I jump down this call, just a micro quick meditation, but okay, fine, forget about everything else, really all energy, no other thoughts, no other emotions. Okay, what's the new intention? I'm going to have an amazing conversation with Kay. We're going to be just absolutely tremendous, add a lot of value to the audience and have fun at the same time. So I'm even working on those things right now, but I, I can absolutely tell you it is like magic. It really just sets you up to go ahead and crush it. And you said one thing that I think maybe we should touch on too is, is okay. setting intention. Mm. You have to set intention with everything that you do every day. You know, set the intention that you're going to try your best to make it an amazing day. And even if you have a really crappy day, but set the intention, even with your goals, set the intention. What are your goals? What do you want to accomplish? Yeah. You know, and because when you set intentions, like your mind doesn't know what's right or wrong. Yeah. Or what's what's real or not real? No, mm -hmm. your mind doesn't know what's right is wrong. It doesn't know what's what's real and not real. <laughs> so when you set the intention, right. <laughs> when you set the intention, I'm um, set the intention to have you know five new clients this month. Mm. Yeah, you don't. Your mind doesn't know if it's real or not, right? Yeah. But. Yeah. But if you set that intention, you're getting into that vibration of making that your reality. So setting intention is very, very, very powerful. So set your intention with whatever you're doing, set the intention. That's also a part of my day, morning routine is I set the intention to make my day a great day to, you know, surrender my, you know, so I, I let the universe lead me, you know, for, uh, I surrender to the guidance that I get and those type of things. Because when you set that intention, you're, you're just putting it out there. And that is very powerful. So, you know, I just kind of like want to add that because I think that is also very, very powerful in, you know, becoming who you want to become because you're setting the intention to become that person. 
Oh yeah, no, absolutely. I totally agree. I mean, if you can't see the target, how are you going to hit it, right? You're wearing a blindfold. Exactly. You're not setting an intention. You're not setting any goals. How are you going to hit that? Right. It's like exactly. a blindfold. It doesn't make sense. So, yeah, absolutely. And and thank you for thank you for going deep there again um, and, and kind of highlighting it to the audience. I love it. Now, OK, obviously, you know, you are doing so many amazing things. You are working with coaches and you're helping them with their coaching practice. You're helping them get better. You're helping them change the lives of their clients. And you uh, Talk to me, you know, just before we started recording this and you told me about lots of other things that you are working on. You're about to launch a new book. You know, you're you're been working on a summit and that's about to be released soon as well. That's a business, uh, you know, strategy summit, etc. But at the same time, you are a parent. Mm -hmm. And yeah. all of this stuff that you're doing um, and, 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 you know, which requires a lot of your time. And at the same time, you're, you're working on yourself, developing yourself. You are reading books. You are going through your meditations and your habits and your routines, etc. I think a lot of people out there can maybe relate to that and say, okay, fine. You know what? I, I'm, I'm trying to accelerate my life. I'm working on myself. I'm trying to develop myself. But at the same time, I, I am a parent or I, I have somebody I care about in my life. I have my spouse, etc., my partner. What advice do you have for those people? How do you actually instill these habits, you know, or not instill these habits, but I guess, how do you help other people in your life get into the same sort of habit, get into the same sort of mindset? Because I think that can be quite challenging where you are on a different frequency to somebody else, where you are accelerating, you're driven, you're trying to move things forward, but the other person might not be. And it could be anybody, it could be your partner, could be, you know, a loved one, could be a family member, could be a friend, could be, could be one of your children. So, you know, how, how do you actually get those people to be on the same frequency? Do you have any advice for, for us for about that? Well, I mean, I am single, so I don't have the whole partner issue right now. <laughs> I've been single for quite a while now. Right. My son is at an age now. He doesn't even want to spend time with me. So I'm like, okay, well, you he just stays in his room. He's 13 years old going on 25. So he doesn't need his mom no more, right? right. So, uh, I mean, but one thing that I do is I don't like working past, let's say, 7 o'clock. I mean, as my my day starts at, you know, my I do my morning routine. I'm usually done. Like, my, I have my first call at 9 o'clock. So the morning is me time. I mean, when my son leaves, you know, I have my, my time uh, to do everything. But in the evening, unless I work on a big project, I truly really try to get off the computer by be between 6 and 8 o'clock. That's usually my time when I'm like, you know what, now I need my me time. So if I would have a boyfriend, husband, or whatever, that would be the time that we spend together. Or if my son, whenever he wants to actually spend time with his mom, then that's when we spend time together. Or like on the weekends. Um, what I would say is for those listeners that do have family, give, get them involved, talk to them. I know early on I was working, I was going to school and I was, I had my son and I was trying to build my business. Mm. So at that point I'm like, look, you know, my son, my, my son's name is Darren. I'm like, look, Darren, I mean, I know you want to spend time with me, but right now this is very important because the more I work right now, the sooner I can quit my job and then we have more time together. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, uh, I mean, weekends, Sundays, I really try not to do anything. I mean, right now I just do a lot of training because like I said, my son doesn't really want to spend time with me. Uh, so I I keep myself busy but you know before Sundays was the day that I spent with him or Saturday afternoon so that's the time that I spent with my son um, during the week like I said the evenings if you know but it's really about letting your your loved ones know what is it like get them involved in your business mm. get them involved in your vision because you have a vision for yourself for your business and guess what your vision is going to impact their life. Yeah. So when you desire to become highly successful, it's going to change their life too because guess what? We're going to be going on vacations. You're going to be getting a new car. You're going to get all these fancy things. So of course they would want that, right? Yeah. So you just want to get them on top, onto your vision as well. Let them know what it is that you want to accomplish and just ask for support. But because just because you're in business by yourself doesn't mean that you have to be completely on your own. Mm. Ask your family to support you. I think that's like the biggest advice that I can give is let them know your vision. Get them on board with your vision. And I know there are certain people, friends, for example, or <clears throat> even family members that don't see your vision, that they simply can't put themselves into what you want to accomplish. That's because... They're just not they're just not entrepreneurs. They simply can't. Yeah. But don't hold it against them. Just 
whenever they try to talk you out of something like you don't need to do that you know that's just two way out there you know don't just give up it doesn't work just acknowledge what they say but then say okay i acknowledge what you're saying but i really don't care what you have to say because i still going to do what i want to do mm. so that's one of the things because you're going to you're always going to have those friends those family members they're going to say why do you work so much why don't you just go out and have fun have a social life that's one of the things like a lot of them you know when i was in the whole trying to do the dating thing you guys did not understand why i work as much as i do or they were very intimidated by the things that i have accomplished well, you know what? In that situation, I chose to just step away and say, you know what? You're not the right guy for me. Yeah. And even with friends, I mean, I turned into a loner because the people that I was surrounded with, they were just not in alignment with what I tried to accomplish. They were very negative. So, I mean, of course, with family, you can't really do that. You can't really cut out family, but you can do that with friends. But it's then also up to you. How do you allow yourself to be affected by their action, by what they say, how they feel, what they tell you, or because they might try to hold you back. But it's, if you have a choice, you always have a choice to allow them to derail you or to stay on your path. And no matter what's going, going to happen, no matter what people are going to say or do, you keep staying on that path. But that is your choice. But that's really the advice that I can give when it comes to the whole family life and work life balance. My life is not that balanced. So I think that's the best I can do. <laughs> the work, sorry, the work life imbalance. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, well, yeah. you know, I love what I do. And right now it's yeah. like, you know, instead of me sitting around being bored, my son in his room, I'm like, ah, I just do a lot of personal development. So yeah. it's fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, uh, you know what? Okay. That was unbelievable advice. That was amazing advice. The whole thing about, you know, not letting other people derail you. It's how you interpret what they say. That's what matters, right? And also the fact that you have a choice. It's your choice whether you let them derail you or not. And then finally, you also talked about the fact that, you know, there are always going to be those people in your life, right? There are always going to be all those people, but they, they don't share the same vision as, as you. You are responsible for your own vision. They're not responsible for your vision. You are. And I love all of that. That was perfect. That was the absolutely spot on. Perfect. Awesome. So, okay. Let's, let's go a little bit. Um, let's take a detour. Let's go into business. Obviously, you talked about you're holding a business strategy summit very, very soon. You're going to be bringing on 30 amazing guests. You're going to be there actually running the summit and also coaching at the same time, which sounds absolutely tremendous. But obviously, you have your own very successful coaching business. Maybe can you just uh, summarize summarize how you actually got started and how you managed to build your business? Because I think that's something that a lot of people struggle with on how well I, okay fine i'll start something but how do i actually build it what does it take to actually you know go to the next level so maybe you can talk to us a little bit about that and then obviously how that led to this stage where you have a very successful business but at the same time you're running a summit now okay well how do you get started i mean you need to have a strong foundation like know your niche and you know that actually turned out to be the biggest theme of the entire business excellence summit you know right. was knowing your niche because you need to be you need to be extremely clear on who is your target audience your ideal client because target audience is one thing ideal client is a much deeper step mm. so you need to know <clears throat> who do you work with because i've i've met a lot of people like i work with anyone that needs help no, that's not the way to go. I mean, I'm not saying you need to turn down people that want to work with you. I'm not saying that. But when it comes to the content you put out, the products you want to create, the programs you want to create, your messaging, everything has to be tailored to your ideal client. So when I put content out, it is geared towards the struggling coach, the coach that doesn't really know how to get the business off the ground that is, you know, keep, you know, bumping their head against the wall, wants to build their business, wants to build their list of raving fans, but doesn't know how. It's frustrated, overwhelmed, mm -hmm. underpaid. Yeah. That is my ideal client, right? So any content I put out is geared towards that ideal client. I mean, the target market is the area of, you know, like coaches. That's the target market. Ideal client would be, well, a coach that wants to you know make a difference in the world a coach that is you know coachable that wants to make a difference that is always going to pay on time that has high energy you know taking action that is the ideal client because i would want to work with every coach because not every coach is open to making a difference is not open to doing the work and those type yeah. of things so you want to be crystal 
clear on that. And then I want to go a, a step deeper is you need to know what is going on in their mind. What are they struggling with? What keeps them up at night? Mm. Because then anything that you create is based on that. So going yeah. back to my message, I help you know pe- coaches who are underpaid, overwhelmed, and struggling to get clients. Mm. That's the thing that keeps them up at night. So you need to know that that's a base on your on your foundation and then also you know having a good pricing structure then the next thing is you want to have systems and strategies in place lead generation massive like a summit is technically also a lead generation tool but also it provides massive massive value so you want to do different list building strategies from uh, webinars lead magnets summits gift giveaways build your list of raving fans that is the most important piece because when you have a list of raving fans, those people, they already said yes to you to some extent. The next piece is they want to get to know, like, and trust you because people don't buy from you if they don't know you, hmm. if they don't like you, yeah. or if they don't trust you. They are not going to give you their hard-earned money if you, if you don't fall within those three categories, know, like, and trust. And how do you do that? You build your list of raving fans. You continuously building building the value. Provide them with value. You can build your Facebook group or LinkedIn group or whatever. Build your list of raving fans, your community, because those people, like I said, they already said yes to you to one extent. Now, now you want to inspire them to take that next step with you, which is becoming your client or buying your products or those type of things. And the only way you can do that is providing really massive value. You are providing massive value by bringing experts on your show, interviewing them. So your ideal clients get to experience, they get to learn. So they're going to learn the things that I said today, the other things that your that your audience is sharing with them. They get to know and like know, like and trust you by just listening to you. So if you have different strategies in place where you put yourself as the leader, as the expert, and then provide massive value, people are going to be like, oh, my God, I love what he is doing. You know mm-hmm. what? I want to find out more. So when you have an event, they're going to sign up for the event. When you make an offer, they're going to maybe take you up on an offer. Maybe not. Maybe they need to get to know, like, and trust you a little bit more. But you have that list of raving fans that you can then inspire. I really don't like the word selling or you know convincing. No, if we're in a in a in a service based industry, we want to inspire people by connecting them with the transformation that we can give them, that we can help them achieve. So for me, I don't sell my coaching. I sell the transformation that I bring my clients, and that's what sells. That's what inspires them to take that next step with me. So you want to have, I mean, mindset is a huge part of your business to really get to where you want to be. But then the next piece is you want to have those systems and strategies in place. And, you know, list building is one. You want to have multiple streams of income, you know, different levels of income. I mean, there's so many things that you want to do. But one thing I want to say is you're not going to be able to figure all that stuff out yourself. Yeah. So my advice for that is hire a coach, a mentor, and don't go to your family because your family doesn't know nothing. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But Hire a coach that can help you get to where you want to be. Initially, when I started out, I didn't work with a coach because, like, I don't have money. I need to make money first before I can afford a coach. Mm. Well, how can you build a successful business if you've never done it? Mm. How can you learn how to make money with your business if you've never done it? So you want to work with someone that's already where you want to be. So find a coach that is already a few steps ahead of you that that can help you get to where you want to be yeah because that takes away a lot of heartache a lot of headache a lot of overwhelm um, and it, it's it's a shortcut because the coach already knows what to do how to implement certain things where you don't have to spend hours after hours trying to learn stuff yourself trying to figure out how to actually make it work because it's one thing learning how to do something but mm-hmm. learning how to do it effectively that's the key right there. So a coach or a mentor can, or a professional can actually help you get there. Yeah. So that's how you really get your business off the ground, build mm. your business is mindset, system strategies, get the help that you need and continue moving forward. Don't Thank give up. Love it. Absolutely love it. Thank you for that. Okay. That was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Mm-hmm. So, okay. I mean, at the moment, you are doing lots of stuff. So, you know, you talked about the summit already. Can you tell a little bit about what the summit is about, when it will be coming out in case people are interested? You also mentioned to me that you are going to be launching a book in April. So can you tell us a little bit more about the book, what what that's going to be about, and uh, how, how can people find out more about it? 
Yes, I'd love to. Uh, so my summit is called the Business Excellence Summit. That's also the link, businessexcellencesummit.com. Basically, it's for the entrepreneur who really wants to learn, you know, from expert from experts in the industry on what not to do, what to do, you know, really get the insights into tools, tips, strategies. I mean, I, there's no fluff conversation. I mean, just as much value I provided, the experts provide because I don't do a lot of backstory. I mean, like, okay, let's let's cut to the chase. Let's tell us, you know, what it's all about, what you need to do. So it's different topics around you know how you can really grow your business and take your business to the next level that launches on the 5th of March I mean whoever is listening and would like to sign up for that they can do that on business excellence summit.com each day for for like about 15 days from the 5th until the 19th I released two if two interviews each day delivered via email and then there's also the all access pass for some bonuses and stuff, but they can find out more on businessexcellencesummit.com. Awesome. Now, as far as my book, that's dear to my heart because back in December I was meditating and then I had this massive, you know, intuitive download that I'm supposed to put a book together with 365 quotes. Initially, I'm like, where am I supposed to get 365 quotes from? <laughs> you know, I'm not that smart, right? I mean, I was like, no, this is not possible. But it was really, I mean, I. I work a lot in my magic records and then basically those messages came to, to, to me from the universe so I was gifted with this massive project to put this book together and I was being pushed to create this so it took me 45 days to get this book ready and out wow. so I'm super super excited about this It's supposed to really it's motivational quotes and each message has a deeper meaning for each individual person and every time you read the message, it might have a different meaning for you based on the situation you're in. So it's 365 quotes, messages from the universe to help you increase your uh, you know, joy, happiness, and success. So uh, it's really dear to my heart because I was really gifted with this. Um, it also is available as an email series, which is already available because the book uh, uh, launches the 17th. But if anyone wants to find out more about it, it's messagesofinspiration.com. Uh, the emails are already available, so you can actually sign up for it. You get the, email, the, the quote plus an action step with it. So you're not just going to read the quote and like, ah, what an inspirational quote. But you actually are going to take action on each quote. So, um, it, like I said, it's very dear to my heart. My goal with this is I want to get it into the, as many hands as possible because it's going to change a lot of lives. I mean, I actually read it every time I'm having a bad day. I read my own book. I usually don't read my own book, but I have one right next to my bed where before I go to bed, I read a couple of um, the quotes, and it really just puts me in a lot in a much different uh, mood and uh, definitely motivates me and inspires me and just helps me you know, snap out of that funky move whenever I have a bad day. Yeah. So yeah, very yeah. dear to my heart. Awesome, awesome. That sounds fantastic. And to be honest with you, for the audience right now, you have a summit and it's a free sign up to get onto the summit, right? And mm -hmm. there's yes. this book coming out as well, which will add a tremendous value because not it's just quotes, there's an action stuff involved you're prompted to go ahead and take action. And if you have learned anything from this particular conversation, it's the fact that you don't stop, you carry on moving forward, and you have to take action. You have to become that extraordinary person by taking action before you can create an extraordinary life, before you can achieve extraordinary results. So I absolutely love it. Thank you for sharing that, Kay. Um, towards the end, I'd just like to do a quick, like a rapid fire round, just two, three quick questions, if that's okay. Okay, just put don't, don't put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay. Well, first of all, let's because you just talked about quotes. What's your favorite quote? Oh my god, I just throw, wrote 365. I should know one, right? Share your message. Your message is meant to be heard. Um, don't I don't remember how I exactly wrote that message, but don't think that your message is not important enough for you to share it because there are people out there that are waiting to hear your story mm. so no matter how you know light you think your story is or how you know disempowering whatever I mean share your story your share your story is meant to be shared your story is important enough to be heard and uh, don't hide behind the illusion that it's not it's not an important enough story yeah love it yeah because surely there are lots of people who will be able to relate to some aspect of your story I, I love it I absolutely exactly. love it awesome okay so next question is what do you think 
is the link between somebody's mindset and their level of success? Oh boy, that it's mindset is everything. You can't become successful if you don't work on your mindset. I mean, mm. mindset depends. I mean, everything in your business depends on your mindset. The content you're putting out depends on your mindset because if you don't believe that the content is good enough, let's say you want to put a summit together and you don't really believe that it's really good enough or maybe you think like, oh my God, I totally messed up in those interviews. Yeah. You're putting out a vibration that people are not going to sign up for it because you're already putting out a negative vibration. Mm. When it comes to having a sales conversation with a potential client, if your mindset is not right, you're going to bring a push that across. Like with me, you know, I kept having that, uh, that mindset, like I'm not good enough. Why would people pay me? So guess what? Energetically, I already pushed those people away. I told them energetically, I told them don't work with me. I'm not good enough. You know, I don't. Okay. Yeah. So your mindset is everything. If you don't work on mindset, just think about it like that. And if you want to make six, a six figure monthly income and you're not making that right now, then mindset wise, you're not that person yet. Yeah. You need to be a person from the inside out because success is an inside job. You don't mm -hmm. become successful from the outside in. It's from the inside out. You become successful inside first, the becoming part. And then everything else falls in place. Like success is really 90% inner work and only 10% taking action. But I want to take it a little step further. It's taking inspired action. Not mm. taking action out of desperation, but take actions out of inspiration, stuff that feels good to you, not just like, oh, this is the new shiny thing, you know, that's gonna bring me all, all the clients. No, you wanna take inspired actions. But your mindset behind all of those actions is hugely important because if your mindset is not in alignment with what you want to create, yeah. you're gonna have the you're gonna have your next failure. So before you take any kind of action, check in with yourself. How do I feel about that? What, how do I feel about what would come out of that? What if it becomes successful? What if it mm. is successful? Or do you feel like, well, I don't think I can do this. If that's the kind of mindset, then it's the wrong thing to start. So don't ever start anything where you're not completely happy with it, feel good about it, and you just know it's gonna rock, you know, rock out the park or whatever you say that. So, you know, mindset is really, it's everything, with everything, not just with business, but everything in life. If you, you can actually try that. I have tried that before. When I was supposed to have a, a have a meet and greet call and I really didn't feel like talking that day. In my mind, it's like, don't answer, don't answer, don't answer. Well, guess what? They didn't answer. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. how powerful your mind is because you're putting that energy out there. So, you know, try it, give it a try. I'm telling you, it's working. Wow. But, you know, mindset, it's everything. It's really, it's everything. You can't become successful without the mindset. Yeah, love it. I absolutely love it. And, you know, as I sit here, you know, listening to all this and this amazing conversation, I, I'm sure the audience will absolutely agree with me. But literally, I'm vibrating with energy. I'm ready to, I feel like the Hulk, I'm ready to run through some brick walls and tear apart some tanks and, and awesome things like that. But there's some really powerful takeaways from this. I, I absolutely love it. And to be honest with you, I think I'm going to have to, once we're finished here, I'm going to have to go back and listen to this all over again because the, the stuff that you shared with us was, was just absolute gold. I absolutely loved this whole conversation. I had a blast. Um, and really, I just want to thank you, Kay, for taking the time to you know just be here with us. This was phenomenal. I think it added a lot of value to other people. I think they could really relate to your story. You were just so open, so genuine, and so giving. Uh, you didn't hold anything back, and it, it was just a phenomenal, phenomenal conversation. To be honest with you, I'd love to have you back for round two. Anytime. <laughs> I mean, I appreciate you know you having me, and you know, I, you know, just for me to be able to share what I've gone through. If I can just make a difference in one person's life each day, that's just what makes my day. So I appreciate you having me. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. I, that's 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 great. And you know what? I I just want to know at this stage, how how can people reach out to you? If somebody wants to connect with you, if somebody wants to reach out, what's the best way for them to reach out and connect with you? Uh, it's through my website, ksanders.com, or they can join me in my Facebook group. It's uh, the Conscious Entrepreneur Lounge. I just recently opened that. I mean, I do a lot of woo, -woo stuff in there and business, you know, growing uh, business growth strategies. I'm going to be doing challenges in there and all sorts of training and stuff. So, you know, that's the two. Or then I'm also on Facebook, regular on K Sanders and then LinkedIn. And I'm also newly on Instagram too. So, yay. <laughs> Fantastic. That's beautiful. And I'll, what I'll do is I'll put all those links below in the description so people can just reach out.
by clicking on that link. So the audience now, I just want to say, you know what? This conversation was just super powerful. It's one of those conversations where I personally want to go back and listen to it all over again because it added so much value to me and I'm sure it just added so much value to you as well. And Kay is just absolutely incredible and I'd love to have her back. I mean, if you think about it, you got the coaching today live from somebody who coaches other coaches. Just, this is incredible. And the fact is, Everything, there were loads of takeaways, but everything from the fact that people who are in your life and you have a choice in terms of how you interpret their, uh, you know, how they communicate with you about your vision, um, from things like how you actually get people to buy into your vision, from things like how you actually set your mindset, those habits, those tips, those routine, and habit stacking, things like how you need to read to upgrade the software in your brain, and you know, how you need to meditate to bring yourself back to ground zero. And finally, we talked into business strategies and Kay shared like a whole model of how you can build your business. I mean, if you're somebody who's thinking of starting a coaching business, you have absolutely no excuse not to reach out to Kay. I encourage everybody to reach out to Kay and start a conversation. You don't know where it's going to go. She added a lot of value to us. So the least we can do is just reach out and say, thank you. But seriously, if you're somebody who's thinking of starting a coaching business, you have no excuse. K is world class, okay? She's a best-selling author. You want to reach out and connect with her. She has a tremendous network and, you know, just a lot of expertise that we can all benefit from. So go ahead and make that connection. Reach out to K, um, even if you just want to say thank you. I think it's important that we do that. But apart from that, Kay, finally, just thank you so much. Seriously, this was absolutely phenomenal. And uh, we'll definitely schedule something again very, very soon. Well, thanks so much for having me. I definitely appreciate it. And I definitely had a lot of fun. So we did make a great make, make a great tea and have a, have a great conversation, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that, that was there was some lots of synchronicity and great energy, lots of flow. Just it just it was tremendous. I did I didn't even realize the time. I'm just looking at the time right now. I, know, right? Just, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize the time. So yeah, uh, this was awesome. Okay, thank you. No, thank you. All right, guys, as always, I urge you to take action. And lastly, I just want to say, as always, I really appreciate you taking the time and spending this time with me and listening to these conversations and making the commitment to yourself to gift yourself this time so you can upgrade the software that runs in your brain because how else will you become extraordinary and how else will you achieve extraordinary results? Take care, hustle hall, and I'll catch you in the next one.